We've all heard about prime numbers, those like 3, 17, 53, that can only be divided by themselves and one. With us is a British mathematician who has written a book about them. Welcome, Marcus. Hello. Now, your t-shirt is a really interesting t-shirt. Tell me what that equation is about. Uh, this is an equation for the trajectory of a football. So it's in fact um, Galileo Galilei who came up with understanding how to predict where a football will land. And x is the distance you've got to stand away from uh, where the football has been kicked. So that's where you're trying to what you're trying to work out. And in order to be able to solve this equation, you need to know u and v are the vertical and horizontal velocity of the football. You also need to know gravity because um, if you're playing on the moon, uh, the ball is going to go in a different uh, distance. Um, and then y is the height of the ball that you want to catch it at um, or the, where you're going to kick it. Um, so once you know y, the velocities u and v and gravity, then you have to solve this quadratic equation to work out x, the distance away from the football that you need to stand in order to be able to catch it or kick it. Now, tell us what the big problem is about the primes, Marcus. Well, the primes uh, really go to the heart, I think, of what it means to be a mathematician because I describe a mathematician as somebody who looks for patterns. Um, that's what I do all day in my office, is uh, pattern searching. And the, so the problem with the primes is, is there a pattern in these numbers? So you look at them, they start 2, 3, 5, 7, and skip to 11, 13, 17, 19. As you count through them, you know, what we'd like to do is to find perhaps an equation like this which will help us to predict where the next one will be or to find some rule to get to the next one from the previous ones you know. But as you look through these numbers, they seem to be wild and chaotic. They seem to be more like lottery ticket numbers. Um, so it seems to be very hard to predict, even though you might know the first hundred primes, where the next one will be. So that's a big tease for the mathematician because uh, you know, we're a subject of looking for patterns, but yet the most basic numbers in our subject, these primes, which are a bit like the atoms of, um, of mathematics, um, are building blocks. We don't understand any patterns to them. So, so that's the big challenge, trying to understand some structure. How did nature choose the primes for us? Okay, now you've called your book The Music of the Primes. Where's the music in a bunch of random numbers? So that was the great discovery made by 19th century mathematicians, in particular this guy called Riemann, um, who understood that uh, if you looked at the primes in a completely new way, you could find some structure in them. And that's actually what makes a very good mathematician, somebody who can do lateral thinking, look at things in a new way, ask a different question. Somehow for 2,000 years we'd been obsessed with either trying to find an equation or trying to predict when the next prime is. And Riemann said, no, let's take a step back and try and look at the primes all in one big go and understand whether there's some sort of um, pattern by looking them all together. And what he discovered is um, that they have real music hiding behind them. What is that music? Um, well, anybody who has a, an iPod or an MP3 player, um, they're able to hear the music in their ear because of some clever physics, which says that all music can be broken down into sine waves of particular frequencies. So if you want to hear the sound of a band, of course there isn't a band hit it hiding in your iPod or in your ear, what your MP3 player is doing is to make the, the, um, the little membrane in the loudspeaker um, vibrate at all of these sine waves of different frequencies. And when you add them together, your ear is tricked into hearing the sound of a band. So even my voice now is being broken down into sine waves, recorded, and then will be reconstructed in whichever medium you're hearing me in, and you, you can hear my voice. So the primes, we discovered, had a similar sort of behavior. Riemann discovered certain sine waves of very strange frequencies, which when you piece them together, will help us to understand exactly how the primes are laid out in the universe of numbers. And he also made some predictions about this music, um, which we cannot prove. And this is something called the Riemann hypothesis. And it's about the nature of this mu music, something that he thought happened in it. And for 150 years, we've been trying to prove that his intuition was right, but we haven't been able to do it. And there's a million dollars on offer for anybody who can understand fully this music of Riemann's. Well, there's, there's money in all kinds of ways in the primes. Um, prime numbers are used to encode credit card details over the internet. Can you tell us how that works? Yeah, this is, was a really exciting discovery because most of us study mathematics just because it's beautiful, there's something very universal about it. But uh, recently the primes have become the key, literally, to the secrets on the internet. 
So if I want to send my credit card to um, an internet company and I, I need to keep that credit card secure, the way that that credit card is encoded, encrypted now, is using prime numbers. So uh, what happens is you go to a website, they have a sort of public e-telephone number, um, which your computer does a calculation with this number and your credit card number, sort of scrambles your credit card number, and then you get that sent to the website. Now, to undo that mathematical calculation, you had to take this e-telephone number, which is not a prime number, but two primes multiplied together. So, in order to decode the message, you had to find the two primes which built that e-telephone number. So, for example, it might be 15. So, you do a calculation with 15, but to undo the calculation, you know, need to know that 15 is 3 times 5. Okay, well, that's a very small number, 15. I can crack that very quickly. But the websites are using numbers which, say, have 100, 200 digits in them. So these websites have numbers which have 200 digits. They're not prime numbers. They're two primes multiplied together. And in order to crack all the codes sent to, say, Amazon.com, you can look up this number, and if you can break it into the two primes, you can crack every credit card that's going to Amazon. So knowing about the primes is also the key to all the secrets that are going across the Internet. The only unknown primes are almost 10 million digits long. How can math students get involved in hunting for such really big numbers? Uh, students can actually join in the search for big primes. Um, there's a piece of software on the internet um, which they can download onto their computers at home. And this piece of software takes one particular candidate prime number and uses a very fast, efficient method which we've discovered to try and test whether it's prime. In fact, all the big discoveries in the last um, decade have been made by people using this software. Complete amateurs who've downloaded this piece of software, run their computer in their idle time. I mean, most people's computers, uh, um, when they're not using them, are sitting there idle. Why not get your computer to try and look for these primes? And there's money to be won here as well, because the first person to find a prime with 10 million digits is going to win $100,000 uh, thanks to a prize which is an offer in America. So, um, uh, you know, not only the, the, the honour of actually finding such a big prime, but you can also make some money out of it as well. Well, there's another interesting bit of mathematics that's very hard to understand, and that's the square root of minus one. Can you explain where that imaginary number leads maths? Well, the whole history of mathematics shows, in fact, that we've been creating new numbers um, ever since we've been counting one, two, three lots, in a way. Most numbers that people know, if you square a number, it becomes positive. You know, minus times a minus is positive, positive times a positive is also positive. So there doesn't seem to be a number whose square is minus one. Uh, for centuries, people keep, kept on coming up in equations wanting this number and saying, but this number doesn't exist, so what are we going to do? So a lot of people just said, OK, it doesn't exist, can't solve these equations. But then there was a real sort of leap of faith almost, uh, uh, of saying, well, why don't we actually create this number and see where it goes? Why don't we say there is a number that, whose square is minus one? And as soon as we said, well, let's, let's create this number and see where it goes, it opened up a huge amount of mathematics that uh, we hadn't seen before. In particular, Riemann's discovery of the music behind the primes um, came to him because he was exploring the mathematics of this new number. And, and so um, a, a lot of things are about creation of new bits of mathematics, which helps you to, to make progress. And um, uh, so it, it uh, pays to be positive in the world of mathematics and, and not to be negative and say things can't be solved. If you're positive, you can actually end up creating some interesting new maths. Um, some people judge maths by how it can be used. And some people say, um, including you, that maths is beautiful in its own right and doesn't need any justification. Can you give me an example of both of those values of maths? These primes are like a universal language. Um, there's something which uh, bind communities together. Everyone, if there was an interview going on in China, they'd sp still be talking about the same prime, 17 being a prime. Even if this interview was going on the other side of the universe, we might look completely different, different biology, different chemistry, but the primes would still be the same. So I think there's something very, um, that's where the beauty is for me, because I think we're getting to eternal truths about um, nature when we're looking at the primes. And it's, um, so, so for me, that's the buzz, trying to understand these numbers and is there a pattern behind them. Well, thank you very much for talking with us, Marcus. Pleasure, pleasure.